The message for today <clears throat> is a question, and it is this. What is the forbidden fruit? What is the forbidden fruit? Now, I, I must be honest and tell you how I even came up on this subject today. The past week, as I shared with you a little earlier, I did a conference last week in New Jersey, and it was a married and single conference workshop, and dropping little tidbits of data and information, just enough to cause the minds of those who were present to start asking questions, you know? And even after returning home, I got a lot of phone calls from people who were at the conference who were like, you just can't leave me hanging like this. Yeah. You know, you just can't leave me hanging. And even at that, I would tell people, I would really rather not share this information with you, especially knowing where you are. Um, because I'm not in the position to be with you regularly enough to teach you or bring you along. And sometimes it's more harmful to get a little bit of information. You follow what I'm saying? And not get a full, complete picture of how it all fits together. Because now you got just a little bit that messes up your whole program. It's like a little, little tiny monkey wrench in your machinery and messes up the whole thing and now you ain't comfortable where you were and you're no longer and you're not comfortable where you think you want to be and that's a bad state to be in. Never have I seen as much as I have seen in the last few months of our ministry the curse of the forbidden fruit. When we think of the phrase forbidden fruit, what comes to mind? I'll tell you, and, and according to most reference materials, when you look up the phrase forbidden fruit, the answer is this, an indulgence or a pleasure that is illegal or is believed to be immoral. Taken from the story of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, forbidden to Adam and Eve in Genesis. Isn't that deep? Isn't it sad that this connotation that we have is about an apple. Nowhere in any scripture text do we see an apple. And then what's so bad about eating an apple? What, why would God forbid an apple? In doing some research on the phrase forbidden fruit, I came up on this picture on the internet yesterday. And it was a picture of a white man who's supposed to be Adam, a white woman who's supposed to be Eve, and a tree. And entangled in this tree was a black man. Muscular built black man, upper, upper torso black man, his tail was that of a snake. I said, look at this here. I wish I could have blew it up so you could see it here today. Notice the subliminal image. Notice the psychopathic racism in that presentation. Yes, yes. A white man, Adam, a white woman, Eve, and the serpent was a black man in a tree with the tail of a snake. tell you brothers and sisters contrary to popular opinion and I heard some people drop this on the radio this morning the forbidden fruit is not sex I say it again the forbidden fruit mentioned in 
The book of Genesis, the third chapter, or the second chapter actually, is not six. Let's read it. <coughs> Genesis, the second chapter. <coughs> The eighth and ninth verse. Check this out. We've been looking at it all the time and looking right over it. And the Lord God, y'all should have it because it ain't but two pages into the Bible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. This the, you guys should have to find this book. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you. <laughs> Genesis 2 and 8, it says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Notice this ninth verse now. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Go with me to the 16th verse now. And the Lord God commanded the man, who did he command, the man or the woman? The man, right, according to their chronology here, according to the chronology of the story, the chronology of the metaphor, did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. Now why am I saying that? Because this didn't really happen. Okay? But according to the chronology of the metaphor, there is a lesson to be learned here. According to the chronology of the metaphor, God said this to the man, Eve wasn't made yet. According to their chronology. Now that's some deep stuff because it completely omits Lilith from this whole context. All right. It omits who, Pastor? Lilith. Lilith. L-I-L-I-T-H. Write it down. Don't take my word for it if you don't believe what I'm saying. Write it down. L-I-L-I-T-H. Go look it up. It should be in your dictionary. If you got a nice big dictionary at home, and it will tell you that Lilith was Adam's wife before Eve. Yes. Yes. But we don't hear about Lilith in the biblical text because Lilith doesn't fit into the parameters of European male chauvinism. Oh, let me take a moment and just drop this on you about Lilith. You see, the problem was they had to, they had to remove Lilith out of the text because according to Genesis 1.26, that's when Lilith was made. And it says, and the Lord God uh, formed man from the dust of the ground. I'm sorry. And the Lord God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them, not let him, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27 verse, so God created man, meaning mankind in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. Now if you do your homework, You'll see from the Hebrew text here, this woman was created simultaneously yes. with Adam from the dust of the ground, not from his rib. Yes, yes. Okay, and according to the mythos, I, what did I just say? Mythos. The mythos, right. This is all allegory and metaphor and myth. According to the myth, Lilith didn't want to listen to Adam. She let Adam know, God made me the same time he made you. <laughs> okay, don't be trying to boss me around. <laughs> don't be putting me lower than you, okay? God made both of us equally at the same time from the dust of the ground. European male chauvinism couldn't allow that to, con to remain in the biblical text, so they had to demonize her. And if you look up the story of Lilith, it'll tell you she's a demon. Why is she a demon? What does she do bad? <laughs> so they got rid of Lilith and decided to make a woman who the man could say, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. 
right. Am I dropping it on you? Yeah. So they went and wrote Eve into the allegory and made Eve out of Adam's rib. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that Adam could look at Eve and say, you're a bone of my bone. Uh -huh. You flesh of my flesh. In other words, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't exist. Y'all see that male chauvinism thing there? Yes. Yes. Okay, let me get back to the forbidden fruit. 16th verse, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. 17th verse, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Once again, what is the forbidden fruit? We just read it. You cannot eat of the tree of knowledge. Knowledge is the forbidden fruit. You see, brothers and sisters, the forbidden fruit is not taught in government controlled schools. And there's a good reason for it. Because if right knowledge was taught, then people would not be slaves to the system. Somebody, somewhere, does not want you, the masses, to realize what they have done. And the only way to keep you from knowing what they've done is to make knowledge the forbidden fruit. Because of this verse right here that we just read, I've had people say to me, too much knowledge ain't good for you. <laughs> what caused the fall of man in the first place. <coughs> causality. Everybody say causality. causality. <coughs> what is causality? Let me ask you a question. Check this out. If an event benefits, okay, if it yields benefits, those benefits that this event yields would most certainly lead us to the one or the ones who are responsible for the event. How? Would you orchestrate an event to benefit someone else other than you? Oh. The programmers orchestrated an event. But it's not for the benefit of the masses. The program of control, religion, education, or I should say miseducation, yes. politics. Yes. The only way that you will remain dumb to it is if you bite into this forbidden fruit concept. Since the World Trade Center catastrophe called 9-11, the United States government has gained more control and power over the people of the United States than it's ever had before. I'm serious, people. So much so that you need to ask yourself, am I a victim of causality? Cause and effect. This attack upon our civil liberties isn't something that just started in 2001 with the World Trade Center tragedy. I'm talking about a program that's centuries old. Yes, yes. 
In fact, it began long before our great, great grandparents were even born. Repeat this after me, please. Those who control education, Those who control, education control history. Control history. Those who control what you learn controls your behavior. That's what is meant, brothers and sisters, by the phrase, your cognitive reality. As a cognitive psychologist, I want to know what do you believe? Yes, yes. Because if I know what you believe, I'll know how you're going to act. And if you've been given a lie to believe, you're going to live a life based on a lie. Yes. In September 1996, the American Broadcasting Company, network we call it ABC, aired a documentary on a book entitled Chariots of the Gods. The author of that book's name was Eric von Daniken. Now check this out. Within the documentary, dramatic video footage was shown that revealed that the hieroglyphs or the medunetta found in the pyramids and the temples of ancient Egypt in this white man's documentary, he revealed that based on the hieroglyphs in Egypt, there was something that resembled a transparent glass tube with a form within it that was shaped like a serpent. Today we call it an element. His research revealed to him that in ancient Kemet, several thousand years ago, this man put it in his book called Chariots of the Gods. Who was he calling the gods? Black people from Africa. And in his book, he lets us know that the ancient Egyptians had already harnessed the power of electricity and already had a light bulb. All right. All right. It's on the walls in Kemet. Yes, yes, yes. His book reveals that the ancient Egyptians had also what's called direct current or a DC battery. Ancient Egyptians. Isn't that deep? Because in 1867, specifically the year 1867, that's the year they did it, the Department of Education made a policy as to what you and your children learn in school and makes absolutely no effort in maintaining the accuracy of its information. Without maintaining their accuracy, the truth will never be taught. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I went to an elementary school in U City a couple of weeks ago. And when I stepped into the, the main hallway there by the main office, there's a, a, a glass display case. And they had pyramids in there, paper pyramids, that the children had made. Well, when I saw the pyramids, y'all know it caught my attention. Yes. And I stepped up to the glass case to look at the pyramids and notice what I saw written on the pyramids by these little first, second, third grade children were, this is a pyramid. The people stink over there. Oh, no. oh yeah. I got to live it. This is where people are dead. These are people who didn't accomplish anything. They're, they're, you follow what I'm saying? 
That's what you call psychopathic racism within education. Yes, yes, yes. Now, why tell little children of such a thing? They haven't been to Egypt, and they'll never want to go. Thank you. It's, this is from Africa, where the people stink. So needless to say, I volunteered. Oh, yes, yes. Some time. I want to come in every week. I let me talk to these children. Y'all clapping, but they won't let me come. <laughs> At least let's put it this way, it hasn't happened yet. I mean it. I mean, listen, as busy as I am, I'm willing to make time to correct that error. Yes, yes. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. And I encourage any of you, okay, who have the time, let's start volunteering some time yes. to be sure that our children get supplemental education. We ain't trying to change the curriculum. We know what that curriculum is designed to do. But let's go on in there and supplement yes. the lie with the truth. Let them see African evidence yes. that demands an African verdict. It should be interesting, brothers and sisters, that even though Eric Von Daniken's book, Chariot of the Gods, clearly shows that the first light bulb was made in ancient Egypt. I mean, it was a big light bulb, too. Even though he actually shows this, he shows the picture inscribed in stone in his book, you need to understand that Government approved. What kind of, what did I just say? Government approved textbooks still reflect Thomas Edison yes. as the creator of the light bulb. Yes. They'll tell you Edison invented the light bulb. And don't say anything at all about Eric's discovery. People who have studied electricity, they don't learn about the harnessing of electricity in ancient Egypt. They learn about Thomas Edison. Everybody say this, when your beliefs, when your beliefs do not coincide with the facts, you've been misled. Think on that for a moment now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When what you believe does not align itself with fact, you've been misled. And then you need to ask yourself, well, what else was left out of my education? Most of you sitting in here, you were taught that Columbus discovered America. You believed it. I believed it. That's because I was taught from a Eurocentric perspective. But after finding out the truth, and to be honest with you, all you had to do was just think. Because even when they told you that, they told you Columbus ran into some Native Americans. And we just didn't put it together. How you gonna discover America, Columbus, and you saw people here when you got here? If people were misled, and we were, it's their own fault for being naive enough to expect the truth from government and politicians, and guess what, y'all? And even religious leaders yes, yes. that have steadily increased their ability to lie to the people. I'm serious, y'all. We're in a day and time now where the lies are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Yes, yes. The reason why they're getting bigger is because the powers that be see that people are starting to think. So since people are starting to think, the powers that be have to enhance or enlarge their lies. In 
accurate education is deliberate because it is a part of a grand scheme to keep the masses dumb, dependent, and unaware. Look at the person next to you and say, the powers that be do not want you to know the truth. Now, whether y'all like that or not, that's the truth. The powers that be don't want you to know the truth because if you ever learn the truth, they won't have no more power over you. The conference I was at last week, one of the, one of the presenters got up and was talking about, you, you need to tithe. And I sat there, my mom's shoulder in the back, and I think he could sense my spirit. I didn't disagree with what he said. What I disagreed with is when he went to misuse the Bible to, to enforce his statement. He started quoting what chapter? Who knows? All right, I see y'all been programmed too. Malachi, the third chapter. Will a man rob God? <laughs> Yet you've robbed me in tithes and offerings. Therefore, you are cursed with a curse, saith the Lord. And I sat there like this. I start biting my finger. Because I wasn't my lecture. I was sitting in on his. But I had to snag it at the end. And I said, I just, any questions? I said, yeah, I got one question. I said, who was Malachi 2 and 1 talking to? And he had to turn and see. I said, fine, let's turn. It says, and now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. And the rest of the book of Malachi is talking to the priest who was misusing the tithe that the people had brought. And needless to say, we didn't sit too well for the rest of the conference. Why? Because I presented forbidden fruit. You hear what I'm saying? To achieve, in fact, Brock Chisholm. Brock Chisholm was the former director of the World Health Organization, United Nations World Health Organization. And this is what he said. Check this out. To achieve a one world government, I'm quoting him, to, receive, to, re, to achieve a one world government, it is necessary to remove from the minds of people their individualism. Their loyalty to family traditions and national identification. Holler this back at me. Freedom comes with knowledge. Y'all believe that? Yes. We just sang it. Yeah. The knowledge of the truth will make us free. That's how Africans ought to be. We ain't free because we don't know. Right. Bottom line. Real simple, y'all. If that statement is true, then why aren't we free? Because we don't know. Now don't get me wrong. I didn't say we, we are, we're not indoctrinated. I didn't say that. We are the most indoctrinated people in this nation. We are the most brainwashed people in this nation. We are the most devoted people in this nation to the program that the oppressor has given to us. We're more devoted to it than anybody else. And want to know why we ain't free. A person's depend hear this, y'all, hear this. A person's dependence ends when they acquire knowledge that those whom they depend on possess. Does that make sense to you? If you depend on somebody else and you don't know what they know, you will remain dependent upon them. But once you acquire the same knowledge that they have, your dependence
hands upon them just came to an end. Yes, sir. Now you know why a lot of pastors won't tell y'all the truth. All right. All right. All right. Forgive me, y'all. I got to tell it like it is. Yes, the people are so dependent. That's, that, that's the shepherd sheep mentality. If y'all remember, I told y'all, I ain't the shepherd. All right. All right. And you ain't sheep. I know that's improper grammar. Y'all let me be. That I ain't your shepherd and you ain't. See, if, if that's the case, then I need a sheepdog. Yes, sir. Right? Reason being, sheep are stupid. Sheep can't learn. Sheep constantly go astray. No matter how much you try to help them, they go on. Wrong somewhere because that's the nature of sheep. So then that means I got to get a sheep dog. So believe it or not now some churches are structured like that. And the pastor wants you to know I'm the shepherd and you're God's flock. Bless God. Look at the person next to you and say you're a disciple. He's the teacher. Got that? Should be a disciple. Thank you, Elder. Should be a disciple. He's the teacher. See, what that means is you can learn. And you can learn so much that one day you can be a teacher. And that's how the truth will spread. Why is it that there are some people sitting up in the same church they've been sitting up in for the last 40 years? and don't know no more than they knew after they was there for five years. Freedom comes with knowledge. The, the global elite know this and have molded society to work in their favor by keeping the masses ignorant. The only ones allowed to design are the ones who make policy and they design for dependence. One of the most powerful scripture verses that's ever been quoted is Hosea 4 and 6. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now, why do the people have a lack of knowledge? Because it's the forbidden fruit. Y'all hear this? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, check out what the rest of that verse says. See, we just quote the first phrase of that verse. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. It's Hebrew 4 and 6. I mean, Hosea 4 and 6. But it goes on to say this. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Y'all hear me? Y'all turning to see it? Good. I want you to see it. It says plain as day, because you have rejected knowledge, I'm going to also reject you. And then it even gets deeper than that. So that you will be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast Check this out, people. This is some heavy stuff. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, what does the rest say? I will also forget thy children. Oh, my God. Notice what it says. Seeing that you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Yes. Look at the person next to you and say, we, can, we can't afford Lord, to suffer, suffer the forbidden fruit. The forbidden fruit. We can't afford that, y'all. We can't afford to suffer, I should say, not accessing the forbidden fruit. We can't afford it. We've been manipulated into thinking too much knowledge ain't good for you. Why is it that the people who don't know are the ones that always say that? Yes, yes. <laughs> Hear the voice.
voice of God and our ancestors speaking. And as I was putting this together, I'm going to be honest with you, this question came in my spirit so strong to ask you today. So I ask you, as God's messenger to you, as, 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 as a voice from the ancestors speaking to you now, here's the question, what good are you to me ignorant? Oh. Did y'all hear the question? Yes. Looking good, but ignorant. Popular, but ignorant. What good are you to me being ignorant? More importantly, what good are you to the work of the kingdom of God if you don't understand how Satan works? I think it's 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. I think it says that these words, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. Am I correct? Is that what it says? What that means, people, is just to be sure that Satan, the satanic forces, the Satian forces, don't get the upper hand on us. Let us be aware of how Satan works. I got to tell y'all like it is, our people are not aware of how the devil works. I'm going to tell you why. The number one reason why we're not aware of how the devil works is we have no idea what he looks like. Yes, yes sir. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Now, this is some deep stuff. Follow what I'm saying. For those who are not used to hearing me say this, follow what I'm saying. Bear with me here for a moment. Nobody knows what the devil looks like. He's a spit. <laughs> here for more. Why is it, black man, black woman, why is it that they gave you a realistic human figure as your savior? The figure that they gave all of us was a blue-eyed, blonde-haired, soft Faggotized dude. That's the image they gave us and told us he died for our sins. And we all grew up with the picture hanging up in our house. Ain't nobody in this house white but that picture. You know I'm telling the truth, like it or not. In your living room, got one of the pictures with the light over it. With this dude sitting there like this, <laughs> hands clasped, looking up with a beam of light shining down on him. How many of y'all had one of them y'all saw y'all yeah, see the hands right? I know you did. I had it. I grew up with it in my house. <laughs> now that's some deep stuff, y'all, because they painted a realistic image. Zoid image as our savior. But what image did they paint for you for the devil? An unrealistic figure. Red. With horns. A trident, a pointed tail, and flames following him wherever he went. And we saw that as the devil. See, that's some deep stuff, people. See the, see the programming there. You ain't going to see nobody like that in your travels. But you'll see people who look like that savior. And without even realizing it, the subliminal, the psychosis there, man, I'm telling you how this works. Whenever you see anybody of the same ethnicity, of the Savior image that they gave you without even realizing it, compulsively, we call it in psychology, compulsive behavior, you automatically respect them and hold them in high esteem because they look like your Savior. The mind control mechanism, people. Let me break these 
verses down for you right quick so you can really see the meaning in the metaphor. Genesis 2, 8 and 9. Genesis 2, verses 8 and 9 says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Now, let's break that down for a moment. You don't have to take my word for it. Those of you who have your Strong's Concordance, when you get home, do your own research on it. And you see it says, and the Lord. First of all, let's look at the word Lord here. The Lord here is Strong's reference number 03068, which is the word Jehovah. In this particular verse, it does not mean Almighty God. It simply means the existing one. Now, to get the real meaning of it, you need to connect it to the next word. There are two words there. And the Lord God. God in this verse is the reference number 0430, which means rulers. So, when you put the two together, it says the existing ones who are rulers or the ruling class. Getting this thing now? Planted, Strong's reference 05193. The word planted in this verse doesn't mean like you plant a garden. It's translated into the English word established. Ah, oh, shucks. <laughs> established a garden eastward. Don't let the word eastward throw you off. It ain't got nothing to do with direction. Check it out in your Strong's. The word eastward is the Strong's reference number 06924. And it means in antiquity. Deep, ain't it? Eastward means in antiquity. In other words, it's saying a long time ago, in ancient times, this was done. So, so far what we're seeing, just from the word analysis, we're seeing where it breaks down to say the ruling class or, or the existing rulers established a society long time ago. Making sense now? That's why I tell y'all go get Strong's reference concordance. Don't just read the Bible. We got too many folks standing up talking about, I turn to Psalm uh, 3 and 31. <laughs> Keeping us ignorant, man. You can't break it down, get out the pulpit. God is still saying, let my people go, pharaohs. Huh. Yeah. Knowledge, check it out. The tree of knowledge, strong, the word knowledge, there's some deep stuff, check this out. Strong's reference number 01847. Knowledge, here's what it means. Perception, skill, discernment, understanding, and wisdom. Why would God forbid you to have knowledge? Why would God forbid you to have perception, skill, discernment, understanding, or wisdom? Why would God tell you you can't have that? Unless it ain't God. But a people who want to keep you enslaved. That doesn't make any sense. How are you going to give your best to God ignorant? So brothers and sisters, we must understand that the Garden of Eden mentioned in this passage in Genesis is a metaphorical representation of a society that is founded on dependence and control. The question now I ask again, is why would the allegorical Adam and Eve be deprived of knowledge? Well, in the next chapter, the devil talked to Eve and told her that if she eat of this fruit, she'll know the difference between good and evil 
and be as God. Look at the person next to you and say, that's not what it says. Now in the King James Version, that's what it says. But in the original text, it doesn't say that at all. It says you will know the difference between good and evil as God does. Big difference. As God does. Why would, I mean, you know, you want your children to know the difference between good and evil, don't you? Yes. So why wouldn't God want his children to know the difference between good and evil? Why? God does want us to know. So the knowledge of good and evil became the forbidden fruit. Why was it forbidden to learn? This knowledge when studied leads to revelations of the world you live in. And that's why we can't maneuver through society like we should, brothers and sisters, because we're ignorant. I mean, just on basic things, just basic things. I felt so bad last night. Uh, I felt so bad. I felt so bad. I don't even want to tell you about it. It's embarrassing. But I'm going to tell you. <sighs> I was in the supermarket looking for an item last night. You know, somebody called me and told me something that was good to take for my cold. It's not dates, but um, it's this other thing, something like dates. Don't say figs, thank you. Not prunes, <laughs> figs. <laughs> figs. And so I'm standing there looking for figs, right? And I don't know where they are. So a brother walked by who works in the produce, produce department. And I said, excuse me, brother, uh, y'all got any figs? He said, fig? What's that? And it's deep, because I didn't know how to tell him what, what it is. <laughs> I didn't know how to describe figs to him, because I'd never eaten figs before, you know? And uh, he said, uh, 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 let, me, let me check that out and see if we got some figs. <laughs> Needless to say, he went on in the back, I ain't seeing him no more. <laughs> white dude walked out, about the same age. I said to the white guy, I said, man, excuse me, do y'all have any figs? He said, oh yeah, they're right over here. I said, ain't this something? Why does he know what figs are? And my brother didn't know what figs are. Why? Y'all see what I'm saying? This morning, security team and I, we stopped in, in, in Burger King, you know, to get some orange juice and what have you. And the sister behind the counter was saying something to the lady. And uh, nobody could understand what she was saying. You know? And so after she said it about three or four, the lady's looking at her, excuse me? What was it she said, man? Y'all remember? Go cut. Huh? Go cut. Go cut. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. You know how you put your drinks in a, in a, in a container to go? You know? And she's, you want to go cut? Right. So the lady's standing looking at her. Excuse me? She said, want to go cut? They said, excuse me? I said, she's asking you, do you want a to-go cup? That's just how I had to say it, you know? And it's deep because the young lady doesn't even realize that I was trying to improve her presentation. Y'all see what I'm saying? We have to matriculate through the society that we live in, y'all. And you cannot maneuver through this, through this society ignorant. Please understand that, young people. Okay, you cannot maneuver through the society and you can't put words in the dog. You can't do that. It shows that they truly kept the forbidden fruit from you. And we got to put a stop to it. Today's churches are temples of control. Yes. Let's look at the church's presentation here. This is some deep stuff, man. 
What is the parallel of the Lord God's behavior with the modern day ruling global elite? What's the parallel here in their policies and what it's done to us? The, today's ruling elite says, you can't know this. I got to say it. I got to say it even though I am in the craft. That's the whole program behind the Masonic Order. That's the whole program. We are the ones who got the knowledge. You ain't got it. It's called light. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Why can't you have some light? Yes, yes. And then if you claim to have some light, come on, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. And the only light you have is what they told you. That ain't light. That's ignorance. Active darkness. Yes. Yes. Am I making sense here, y'all? Y'all yes. gotta tell you the truth. We've been hoodwinked. We've been blinded. Yes. Listen to this. The act of blinding someone, here we go, here we go. Check out how this works. The act of blinding someone is bestowing lies upon them <laughs> and then making them live and teach those lies to future generations. Yes. Did that make sense? Yes. That's how you blind a people. You teach them a lie and then you teach them to live that lie and then to teach that lie to future generations. I'm a, I'm a victim. Not only am I a, a victim, I was, what do you call it, a, a, a perpetrator, an offender myself. After I grew up in the lie, I became trained in the lie and taught the lie to others. Yes. That's why I'm trying to correct it now. That's why I give my life. I, I wish I could reach 100 people for every one person I told the lie to. I didn't know any better. The mind can't teach what it doesn't know. Right. But now that you know, yes. the facts prove today that we all live in bondage. We're enslaved to the global elite. They lie to us. Look at, just look at George Bush for that matter. <laughs> they lie to us either directly or indirectly in the speeches they give even though George Bush don't write his own. <laughs> I can't help it, y'all. I, I don't have no, no feelings for George Bush at all. That man, is, he's, he's, he's murdered a lot of people. I mean, he has murdered a lot of people, and I stand here today without reservation. I ain't shame afraid to say it. He needs to be locked up for war crimes. Yes, They'd be going after anybody else for war crimes for doing the same thing he did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They lie to us in their speeches. Pastors, as I said, in churches across this country are teaching us what they were taught. It's frightening to wake up to the fact that you live in a control system that lies to you. It's, it's frightening people to wake up to the fact that the thing that you've been believing in, the system that you've been believing in is a lie. That's a frightening thing. It deprives you of knowledge and controls your destiny. Think how many people are still unaware. Yes, sir. Yes. Who said that you can't eat? of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Think about it. The Bible said it. See, that's your problem. That's your problem right there. The Bible says it and therefore it controls you. Look at the person next to you and say, there's no literature on this planet that should stop you from thinking. 
Yeah. Okay? Please understand that. Please understand that. It's dangerous to sail the seas rudderless. Did y'all get that? Yes, At the back of every boat, there's a thing called a rudder. A little piece of wood in the back. It's dangerous for a ship to be on the sea without a rudder. Because if you're out there without a rudder, you were forced to go where the wind of those in power want you to go. <clears throat> Would God really say to you, you can't get knowledge? Would God really say to you that you cannot know the difference between good and evil or right and wrong? Would God, my answer to that now that I'm thinking, like the brother said, now I finally got myself together. Now I know just who I am. Now that I can think for myself, I can say, no, God wouldn't say that. Right. Of course God wouldn't say that. How am I supposed to fight off deception? How am I supposed to fight off the evil one unless I know the difference between good and evil? God wouldn't say that. The people who want to control you are the ones who told you God said that. And you shall know the truth and be glad you did. Ashe.